Alrighty folks, chapter four is all about minerals. In this first video, we're gonna kind of go over the basics. So we'll talk chemistry, we'll talk elements, uh, atoms, ions, that kind of fun stuff, right? So, why is it important to study minerals? Well, first of all, it's important to study minerals because uh, we have important uses for them, industrial uses. This here is bauxite, it's how we get our, our, our aluminum, that's our primary ore from aluminum, right? Here's a, a, a copper uh, sulfate, uh, and this is, of course, you know, we use copper for, for wiring, for tubing, um, for plumbing, all that kind of good stuff, right? Now there's also valuable metals, right? So gold, we think that's pretty. We can make rings out of it, right? Iron, we have a lot of iron here in Michigan. The UP produces about 25% uh, of the country's iron. Uh, Minnesota, continuing on that part of the UP, um, produces 70%. And uh, the rest of the world gets to share, or the rest of the country gets to share the last 5%. But the primary or for, or, or primary use for iron is to create steel. And then, of course, we have gem minerals, things we think are pretty and valuable. Stick them in a ring and give them to your girlfriend, right? Uh, however, you know, there are over 4,000 different minerals uh, within our Earth and more being identified all the time, right? So that's a lot of different minerals, right? However, th fortunate for us, 98% of our crust is formed from just a few dozen rock-forming minerals. And these minerals are a combination of these eight elements in general. Um, and we will become very familiar with these eight elements that become our friends. These are the eight most common elements on our plant or on our crust by weight. So oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, right? As we can see, oxygen and silicon make up a vast majority of that, right? And then going down to here, magnesium being like, you know, 2% or so. Everything else pretty much is is here in trace amounts, right? We need to, to find, uh, uh, you know, natural processes that will concentrate these in order to extract those. So the vast majority of our rock forming minerals are gonna be made out of, of these eight elements, combinations of these eight elements, right? So taking a look at kind of, you know, uh, our, our use of these minerals, right? For every American, we're going to need 3.7 million pounds of materials, minerals, metals, and fuels throughout our lifetime. Now, are we eating all of these? No, of course not. We're not eating, you know, 82,000 gallons of petroleum, but this is stuff to maintain, you know, our current kind of American lifestyle, right? So roadways, houses, infrastructure, uh, all of that is included in here, right? Uh, 911 pounds of lead, uh, 1.72 million pounds of stone, sand, and gravel, right? A lot of that being for road base and such, right? The idea here is that's a lot of stuff, right? And if this is for each American, right? You can imagine, you know, we have 330 million Americans times 3.7 million pounds of materials. We have a huge amount of, of requirements from our earth, right? But before we can talk minerals, we got to talk the very basics, right? So let's go back to chemistry class here and talk elements, atoms, and atomic structure, right? So first of all, uh, an element is any pure substance that cannot be broken down farther by any, uh, um, you know, uh, natural or chemical means, right? So uh, these are, you know, those little symbols on our periodic table. Those are our elements, right? An atom, however, is the smallest particle of an element, right? It combines with other atoms to form a compound, right? Um, now we know there are subatomic particles, and we'll talk about protons, neutrons, and electrons, but the smallest functional unit is the atom, right? So here is a very simplified view of the atom. I would say so simplified that it's actually wrong. Uh, this is called the orbital model, and it's kind of laid out you know, kind of how we view our solar system, right? Sun at the middle and the planets orbiting around the outside. Except in this side, instead of have a sun, we have a nucleus, right? So the nucleus uh, has neutrons and protons in it, right? And then uh, acting as the planets and spinning around at, at high speeds are these, these electrons, right? The neutrons have no charge, the protons have a positive charge, 
and then the electrons have a negative charge, right? Now, this is a very simplistic view, and like I said, it's actually wrong. We'll take a look in a minute at a little bit better one, but this kind of, you know, lays it out. So we have, you know, these different orbital paths or energy layers or energy shells that these, these different electrons can live in, right? So let's talk about elements, right? The elements in our periodic table, they're grouped based on atomic weight or, or mass, uh, and their chemical properties, right? Uh, so to just to kind of define a few things here, the atomic weight of an element is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus, right? A proton has an atomic weight of one and an electrical charge of plus one. It's positive, proton positive, right? The neutrons have an atomic weight of one and an electrical charge of zero. Neutrons are neutral, right? The electrons, on the other hand, are, are so infinitesimally small, even compared to the protons and neutrons, we just consider that they weigh nothing. They, they have an atomic weight of zero, and they have our negative electric charge. We'll talk about that in a minute. So the atomic weight, again, is protons plus neutrons in the nucleus, right? The atomic number, however, is different. It's simply the number of protons, right? The number of protons is what makes that element that element, right? We can add or subtract sometimes uh, 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 different neutrons to the nucleus, and it'll stay the same element. It'll just be um, different isotopes, we call them. So, um, but... Uh, but uh, if we change the number of protons, you change that element, right? So the atomic number is the number in the periodic table that you see, right? And that reflects the number of protons in the nucleus, right? So let's look at those little electrons again, right? These are the negatively charged particles. And again, they're so small in comparison to the, uh, the neutrons and protons that they're considered to have a weight of zero, right? Now, I said this one, this model here, this orbital model was wrong, right? A little bit better is the shell model here, right? So as we can see, they don't orbit in a single plane. The electrons orbit in kind of, you know, a shell or a sphere around um, the, uh, the nucleus in these different discrete energy levels, right? These are very specific energy levels, right? And the electrons fill out in the first shell, then the second shell, then the third shell, right? Oops. What happens when uh, we add energy to this uh, this uh, atom, though, if we add energy to this atom, we can charge up those electrons and get them to move from, say, the first shell to the second shell or the second shell to the third shell, right? Uh, but the interesting thing about that is, is they exist, say, in the second shell and then instantaneously exist in the third shell but never exist anywhere in between, right? So they jump immediately from there to there, never existing anywhere in between. That's the quantum part of physics here. Um, anyway, uh, and then when they lose energy, the same thing. You know, they'll, they'll lose energy, and they'll drop back to that lower energy shell, right? Uh, and uh, often give off, you know, uh, uh, energy in the form of, of visible light that we can detect sometimes, right? Let's talk ions now, right? Ions are important, right? Ions are atoms that have a positive or negative charge. So in other words, they have an unequal number of protons and electrons, right? Remember, protons are positive, electrons are negative, right? If we have the same amount of each, they cancel each other out and you get you know, a neutral atom. But an atom that has a, a positive or negative charge is called an ion. Right? Specifically, cations, cations are positively charged ions. They're said to lose an electron, right? So they have one more proton than electron or two more protons than electrons. However many they have determines their charge, right? So if you charge a plus one, if they have one more proton plus two, if two more protons, right? Anions are negatively charged ions, on the other hand, and these gain electrons and are said to gain electrons, right? So, in other words, they have more electrons than protons. If they have one more, they have a, a negative one charge, two more, negative two charge, and so on, right? And as we know, opposites attract, right? Positives and negatives like to bond to each other and create chemical compounds, right? Now, creating a chemical compound, right? Is, 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 you know, that is how we make minerals, but not all compounds get to be minerals, right? 
Um, we'll talk about that in the next chapter, right? So let's take a look at this compound, sodium chloride. What is sodium chloride, right? Well, sodium chloride, let's take a look at the ingredients here, right? And off uh, sodium, a soft, silvery, reactive metal. You put it in water and it catches fire, right? Chlorine, a green, poisonous, noxious gas will kill you dead, all right? Now, do either of those things sound like something you would like to ingest on a regular basis? No. But however, when atoms get together and create compounds or ions get together and create compounds, it often changes, you know, the, 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 the chemistry and the, the, the properties of, of these elements. So uh, the compound NaCl or sodium chloride, this is simply table salt right so separately you wouldn't want to ingest sodium or breathe in chlorine gas right but together they make table salt right so let's look at their structure right so the structure is NaCl which means one sodium to one chloride ion right so we have the chlorine anion which is the negatively charged one the sodium cation which is the positively charged one right makes ordinary table salt right and they line up in kind of a very square or cubic fashion right sodium chloride sodium chloride sodium chloride yada 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 right we'll look at this more in our lab when we we start looking at at, uh, at minerals right and talk about this a little more right uh, naturally uh, salt is considered the mineral halite. It's called halite if it forms naturally, right? So the salt in your salt shaker is not formed naturally, unless it's the pink Himalayan salt, right? Um, and uh, so it is not halite. It is just table salt. We'll talk about why that is in the next video. All right, folks. See you then.